There's a pasuk at the end of Nehemiah where the Novi speaks about Rosh Hashanah. And the Novi says, Hayoim Kodoy Shul Hashem Aleikechem, that this day of Rosh Hashanah is holy to Hashem. Al Tisablu Val Tivku, don't mourn and don't cry. Ki Boichim Kol Haom Kishama Mesdivri Torah. Because the entire nation was crying when they heard the words of the Torah. A person would say, is that what the Torah was written for, to make us cry? And the answer is, in a sense, yes. We find the Zohar HaKadosh says that the first word in the Torah, the word Bereshis, is a combination of two words. Yore, Boishes. Yore means fear, to be afraid. And Boishes means to be ashamed. When Hashem gave the Torah to Bnei Yisrael on Har Sinai, it says at the end of the Aser Sadibrois that Hashem said, you want to know why I went through all of this? You want to know why I gave the Torah with such fanfare and with thunder and lightning and the mountain was shaking? So that the Jews should be zoicha to get to a madreka where they have the fear of Hashem upon their faces and that will prevent them from committing sins. And the Gemara says, what does this mean, fear of Hashem on your face? Zuabusha. This refers to a certain shyness and a humbleness and a feeling of being ashamed when standing before one that you acknowledge is so much greater than yourself that a Jew is supposed to feel in the presence of Hashem at all times. So when we talk about fear and awesomeness and embarrassment and shame, that could be associated to a degree with a feeling of sadness. It certainly isn't an issue of happiness. And here when the Navi talks about the day of Rosh Hashanah, which is one of the Yomim Noiroim, days of awe, he says, Al Tivku Valtisablu, implying, don't take it to an extreme. Even though these are days of awe, Yemei Din, Yomim Noiroim, don't take it too far and turn it into actual Avelus and Bechia. And then he continues to say, Vayomalehem, the Novi said to them, Ichlu mashmanim u'shesum amtakim, eat delicious foods and drink sweet drinks, v'shilchu monois le'ein nochein loi, and send gifts even to those that aren't deserving of it, ki kodoi shayoim ladoineinu, because this day is holy for Hashem, v'alte otzvu, and don't be sad or depressed, because joy with Hashem, that's your most important strength. Now there's obvious contradiction here. Make up your mind. What is Yiddishkeit about? Is it crying? Is it mourning? Is it Chedva? Is it Simcha? What kind of day is this? Rosh Hashanah. It's a Yom Hadin. Should we be afraid? A person who's eating delicious cakes and drinking sweet drinks, that's a person who's in a state of awe and shame and embarrassment. What's the story? And yet this is what's written clearly in this Pasuk, and we find it in many other places in the Torah. The Pasuk says in Tehillim, Vigilu bir odo. Vigilu, be joyful, bir odo, with trembling fear. How do you do that? How does a person do that? How do you do both simultaneously? In the Tefillah on Rosh Hashanah, we say, Uvechein tein pach tucho Hashem aleikeinu. Hashem, please instill pachad. Pachad means special fear in us. Fear with ichlu mashmanim and shesum takim. And a person would say, this, this is very hard to figure out how to do. Is a person expected on their own to be intelligent enough and smart enough to be able to figure out how to do this? The Baal Shem Tov HaKodesh says, that the Pesach says in Tehillim, Zeh Hashar Lashem, this is the gateway that will lead a person to Hashem. What's the gateway? Tzadikim. The gateway is Tzadikim. Through them, Yavoyu Voy. Through them, a person can come close to Hashem. Because the concept, the foundation of Yiddishkeit is a contradiction. We talk about fear of Hashem, and when we talk about fear, we don't talk about it in light terms. We talk about Ro'odo, Noira, Ve'oyoim, Pachad, Eimo, Ve'emoscho, Alkoma, Sheboroso. We're talking about very serious fear. And yet when we talk about Ahavas Hashem, also we're not talking about people sitting at a table here falling asleep and saying, Hashem, I love you. We're talking about people who can dance, who can jump, who can spring, a very light foot, a person who can pounce out of bed and run to shul. The Shulchan Aruch talks about running to shul, not walking to shul. You can't run to shul if you don't love Hashem to a certain extent. 
So the question is, how is it possible for a person to know how to combine these two? The answer is, most people aren't necessarily qualified to understand this on their own. However, part of Hashem's gift to the Am Yisrael is that Hashem gives us a gift of tzaddikim. And if a person is privileged to know a tzaddik, if a person is privileged to be able to see a true tzaddik or a true Talmud Chochem in action, you can see how it's possible for these two channels to be running parallel and not contradict itself one iota. You can see a person who has the greatest degree of respect for Hashem and would never make any type of joke about religion or about a mitzvah or about Hashem or about any Dovor Shebik Dusha. They'll address it with the greatest degree of seriousness and respect. And at the same time, you'll see a person, you see the smile always on his face, a smile of friendliness, a warmth. The Pasuk here says to send gifts, le'ei nochein loy. Send gifts to people that don't deserve it. What do you mean? I thought Yiddishkeit was justice. What about Bote Mishpot? What about the whole concept of courts and law and order and fairness? What happened to that? The answer is that has a place. There is a place for that in Yiddishkeit. But what Hashem really would like to see is a level of Ahavas Hashem and Ahavas Yisroel where a person's capable of sending gifts even if this person doesn't deserve. They didn't give me anything, they didn't do anything for me. Why should I wait for them? Why shouldn't I jump first and do? Where do we see the most extreme example of this? By Tzadikim. The Torah gives us an unbelievable situation that's presented. The greatest Jew of all time accepted by all denominations, Hasidim and Litvaks and white and green Jews, everybody accepts Moshe Rabbeinu as king, Rabban Shalkol Yisrael. The furthest person from Yiddishkeit, as far as we know, a person would say, is anybody qualified to say who's the furthest person from Yiddishkeit? The answer is, I can't say it, you can't say it, but Hashem can. The Torah says there was a person True Yiddishkeit is faith in Hashem, Hashem Echod. The opposite of that is Avodah Zorah, idol worship. The Torah says there was an individual who was qualified to say, Hashem, I see that you're better than every idol in the world. Because the Gemara says there wasn't an idol that he hadn't tried, there wasn't a religion that he hadn't tried and wasn't knowledgeable in. This was Yisroi, Yisroi, the father-in-law of Moshe Rabbeinu. And when the Torah speaks about these two coming together, note this is talking about before Yisroi converted. And the Torah writes clearly, Vayish'alu ish l'reyehu l'sholoim. This person greeted his friend with peace. Who's the Ish? The Ish is Moshe Rabbeinu. Re'ehu is Yisroi. That's how he greeted him. And Rabbi Nosson Zal writes, this is, this is the example that Tzadikim set for us. A Tzadik is able to set an example of how it's possible to be on the highest level and the lowest level, how to make one between two opposites, two extremes. A person would say that these two people have nothing in common. Moshe Rabbeinu is the epitome of Yiddishkeit. Yisro is the antithesis of Yiddishkeit. In order for Moshe Rabbeinu to speak to him, he would have to use a, a satellite or he'd have to use a telescope to be able to speak with Yisro because he certainly couldn't look at him. There certainly isn't any communication between them. And the Torah says, Ish l'reihu l'sholoim. Moshe Rabbeinu is qualified enough to be able to sit in both chairs, in the Simcha, in the Ra'oda, in the Ahava and Yira simultaneously. It's only a person that has perfected the extremes, both extremes, that's capable of being that type of person. A person that could speak to Ahara and Hakoyen and make him perfectly comfortable, and a person who at the same time could speak to a Yisroi and make him feel perfectly comfortable and welcome and turn him into such a success where the most important ceremony since the existence of the world, Matan Torah, takes place in Parshas Yisroi. And this is one of the examples that's set forth for us by Tzadikim. If a person were to ask, what do I need Tzadik for? This is one of the reasons. One of the reasons is because the foundations of Yiddishkeit make it clear that there are these types of opposites. There is a Simcha that Hashem wants from us, and at the same time, there is a Bechia 
there's a time to cry. Shlomo Melech says, Ace Livkois. But for a person to be able to have the Sechel, to be able to know how to weave those together, there are certain times when they're miles apart. But we see proof from the holiday of Rosh Hashanah that it's not, Hashem doesn't say that the time for mourning is in Shiva, is Tisha B'av, and the time for joy is Rosh Hashanah. Hashem says that on Rosh Hashanah itself, there's supposed to be Pachat, and there's supposed to be Simcha. And on Tisha B'av itself, there's sadness, there's mourning, and there's joy. We celebrate the birthday of Moshiach on Tisha B'av. That's why for the second half of the day, we don't sit on the floor. No more sitting on the floor. We do put on the tefillin. For a person to be able to zigzag quickly between Yira and Avu, between Avelus and Simcha, that takes tremendous sechel, and sechel alone isn't enough. That takes a person developing themselves, working on themselves, and bringing themselves to a level of closeness with Hashem, and a dveikist Hashem, just like by Hashem, it's possible for Yira and Avo, Chesed and Gvura, to exist within Echod, within one Hashem. There's one Hashem who has both Chesed and Gvura, so to the tzaddikim that emulate Hashem, by them we find this combination. And this is why the Sforim Akdashim tell us that within the word Yira itself, the word Yira which means fear and respect, in that word, the second half of the word is already the beginning of Ahavu. The Aleph He of Ahavu already concealed in the word Yira. But it's only one who has the privilege of seeing Tzadikim. Tzadikim number one who have studied the entire Torah, and have the scope of really understanding what Simcha is, and have the scope of understanding what Yira is and what Ra'ada is, and then making this Shiluv between them, it's from them that we have the privilege of being able to learn this. We find the Posik says, Ze Keli Vianvehu. This is my Hashem, Vianvehu, and I will beautify him. The Chidozal quotes the Ramah and says, The first Sif in Shulchan Aruch is that a Jew is supposed to try to achieve a level of Shivisi Hashem Lenegdi Somid, where it's not that Hashem is in the Shul, or Hashem is in the Beis Medrash, or Hashem is in the Mikvah, or Hashem is in the Mezuzah. Hashem is everywhere. A Jew has to try to enlarge their vision and enlarge their awareness of Hashem, of the Torah of Yiddishkeit, to such a level where Shivisi Hashem Lenekti Summit, wherever I am, whenever I am, whether it's in bed, Dovr HaMelech said, Asche B'cholaylo Mitosi, I speak to Hashem from my bed. I don't have to wait to get to shul to speak to Hashem. I can speak to Hashem under the covers in my bed. Nobody has to hear what I'm saying, and I'm speaking to Hashem. It's not just, the only time I'm attached to Hashem isn't when I'm wearing a talis and tefillin. Dovr HaMelech was in the Beis HaMerachatz. He wasn't wearing any clothing, and for a moment, it seemed to him as if I'm empty for mitzvahs. And then the Torah says he reminded himself of the mitzvah of bris mila, and he saw that Hashem created us in such a way where there doesn't exist if somebody wants it can be impossible for the person to be separated from Hashem at any time. Even though a person would say in the Beit Merchatz, you're not allowed to speak the Vrei Torah there, you're not even allowed to think the Vrei Torah, but it doesn't mean that the bond with Hashem stops. There's a slight pause or interrupt by a tzaddik, by one who becomes truly religious, there's no such thing as any pause or interrupt. It's constant, it's always. And here the Posik says, Ze Keli, those people who are Zeche, to be Mekayim this Shivisi Hashem Lenegdi Somid, that they feel the presence of Hashem with them at all times, whether they're at work, whether they're in Eretz Yisrael or Lahavdil in America, wherever a person is, a person feels the presence of Hashem with them. About that person, the Posik says, Vianvehu, Ani Nase Nove Sheloi, that person becomes a center for the Shekhinah to rest on. Just as the Beis Hamikdosh was a place of Vishochanti Besoichon, a Jew that Zoich to this Zekeli, that he can point to Hashem all day. You see the smile on his face. You see even when things are going difficult for him, he doesn't collapse, he doesn't give up, he doesn't lose himself, he doesn't lose his temper. It's always Zekeli. How could I yell? How could I get upset enough to start yelling if Hashem's in the room? Which person wouldn't be embarrassed or ashamed to break loose yelling and screaming if Hashem were right there? And a person who gets to that madrega, that person is literally this type of Beis Hamikdosh. And that person is Zoycha to a madrega, where every single thing that they do has importance to it. 
the Mishnah says in Perki Ovois, V'chol ma'asecho b'sefer nechtovim, that one of the things that's supposed to make a person conscious of living properly is the fact that a person has to know that Hashem writes down every single action that we do is written down in a book and it's going to be reviewed and we're going to be judged by that, by what's written. So there are people that would want to comment, Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem, it's only that. Baruch Hashem, it says in the Mishnah, V'chol ma'asecho b'sefer nechtovim. It's only my actions that are written down in a book. But what I yell and scream and insult people and say nasty things behind people's back and in front of them or nivel peh, all of those things, Baruch Hashem, at least that's not written down. A person would say that's what it seems to say in the Mishnah. The Zohar Kodesh says that that's not true. The Zohar Kodesh says, Kol man do'ovid bahay alma, everything that a Jew does in this world, v'chol ma da'apik mi puma, and whatever comes out of a person's mouth, Yohiv Dino Alkola. The person is going to be judged on all of that. The person would say it seems as if the Zohar Kodesh is contradicting the Mishnah. The Mishnah seems to say that it's only the Maisim that are going to be written down. Show me where it says that the words are going to be written down. So one of the Mephorshim explains, you got it all wrong. Words are actions. Words create. The Mephorshim explained that if a Jew says a good word, if a Jew says a tefillah, or if a Jew says a dvar Torah, or if a Jew says good morning nicely to his wife or to his neighbor, a person says a dovar toiv, he creates a malach. There's asiya, a malach toiv is created. And if a person says something unpleasant, a person speaks any kind of diburim, whether it be leitzonus, whether it be hanufa, sheker, mesapri loshen hora. The Gemara says that there are four types of people that have no connection to the shechina. Those that are guilty of four particular crimes. One is flattery, hanufa, where they speak to people in a dishonest way. They tell a person something, not because they really mean it, because they need something from that person, so they're playing up to them. That's one. The second one is shakronim, a person who lies, speaks falsehoods in general. The third is mesapre loshen hara, a person who speaks loshen hara. And the fourth is leitzonus, a person who makes light of what they're not supposed to. They laugh, they make jokes about things that you're not supposed to be joking about. The Mephorshim bring a remez that the word Chashmal is used as one of the nicknames of the Shechina, Kav the Oer HaChashmal. These four categories, Chanufa, Sheker, Mesapre Loshen Hora, and Leitzonus, are Roshay Tevois Chashmal. That's the opposite of the Shechina, these types of Diburim Roim. So that the words that a person says are very meaningful. Words are Maisim, words are action. And it's for this reason that these tzaddikim, these tzaddikim amitim, who we see, that every word that comes out of their mouth is with a neimus, with a pleasantness, with a sweetness. This bechino vayishalu ish l'reyeu l'sholoim, those tzaddikim azoyche to this va'anveyu, to become a walking, talking beis amikdosh, literally, a center for ashroa sashchino, and an example for us to learn from. And especially during this month of Elul, that one of the Ramosim that's brought about Elul is this posik Ish L'Reyehu Umatono Yislev Yoinim the posik says Megillah Sester Ki Nofal Pachad Mordechai Aleihem in the Megillah it talks about Pachad a person would say it's misplaced Purim is fun Purim is laughing it's costumes it's hamantashen it's getting drunk there's no place for fear and awe in Purim and yet we see clearly in Megillah Sester V'Rabi Me'ame Ho'oretz Misyahadim that not only did the Jews become more religious, the Megillah says that there was a second Matan Torah actually, literally Kimu Vikiblu. Not only did the Jews become much, much more religious than they had been till then, but the awareness of Hashem spread and spilled over even into the other nations. How? Kinofal Pachad Mordechai Aleim. person would say, Pachad? You can bring somebody close to religion with Pachad? Try it. Try it. Try going over to somebody and tell him you should know there's going to be fire and brimstone if you don't put on tzitzis and tefillin and Rabbeinu Tam's tefillin and a third pair of tefillin. You start yelling at a person, Shabbos, see how fast the person will come running to Yiddishkeit. Elamai, 
it's not so simple. A Mordechai, a Tzaddik, on the level of Mordechai, knew how even with Pachad, how to be able to dress the Yira and Ava, to package it in such a way where not only was he Mekar of Jews with it, but Lahavdil, he was even able to be Mekar of those from the other nations. I wasn't privileged to see this tzaddik, Rav Koch of Leizal, but I did have the schus of seeing his Talmidim, our Rebbe Zechrein Levrocha, Moireinu Vrabeinu Rav Retziah Ibn Sim, Rabbi Yisrael Abba Zechrein Levrocha, and the other Talmidim, and the Gemara says, Choch Masodom Toyer Ponov, if you want to see what a rabbi is like, look at his students. By looking at his students, you should be able to see what the rabbi is like. And looking at the students of Rav Koch of Leizal, one could see this shiluv of the Yero and Av of Bishlemus. Halavai, we should be zoiches, chusa yovan aleinu, the schus of our respect in gathering at this time and making a suta like a yontif, a yontif, meat and the works, to show respect to this tzaddik, we should be zoiches that his zuchus should be in the for all of us, especially during Elul, that Hashem should awaken in us true feelings of Yero and Av, both for Hashem and for each other, and in that schus, we should be zeichet to come into the yontif of Rosh Hashanah with the proper yira and ahava and be zeichet together to get to see the final simcha, all-encompassing simcha of Kali Yisrael with the coming of Moshiach. Amen. Amen.